Welcome to the new flat rate podcast. We started out as a contracting family and now we teach technicians how to sell and give contractors practical tools for their toolkit. For more information about what we do, check us out at tnfr.us. Enjoy the episode. Hi, my name is Danielle Putnam, and I'm the president of The New Flat Rate. Very excited to introduce you to my friend Derek today with Two Year Success. And we're going to be talking about wow customer service, but even beyond that, Derek dives into, in this episode, dives into how to really wow your customers and love on your customers and to inspire loyalty and a relationship between your company and your customers. It goes so much deeper than just having good customer service because it's easy for us to all think, oh, Oh, we, you know, our company, we have great customer service. That's easy, right? Well, as you'll see that Derek will say, satisfied customers, these days that's actually not good enough because satisfied can tip down to unsatisfied way too quickly. So how do we actually have wow customer service? Check it out. A man boasts to a friend about his new hearing aid. It's the most expensive one I've ever had. It costs me $3,500. His friend asks, what kind is it? The braggart says, half past four. If you like stories like that, you'll enjoy story time with TNFR. Stay tuned to the end of the episode, and that's where I share the segment called Story Time with TNFR. In that segment, I'll tell you real stories about real contractors and how TNFR helped them. Hi, my name is Danielle Putnam with The New Flat Rate. Very excited to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Derek, with Two Year Success. Hey guys, how are you doing? Danielle, great to be here today. Thanks for being here. Something that I want to start off with is the longtime history between not just Derek and I, but our family companies. My family had a contracting business. My dad was a contractor. When I was a child, I worked in a contracting business through high school, answering the phone, dispatching, running parts. And we actually, as a contracting business, did business with To Your Success. Do you remember? Absolutely. Yeah. Great relationship. Goes back a long time now. And I think we uh, made a lot of happy customers with some cookies for you guys. So I know you did. And we also sent out candy. So after every service call, uh, we would send them some candy and say, thank you for doing business with us. That's right. And then on your bigger jobs, we do a bigger gift like the platter with the cookies. And so I hope we're making you guys hungry today, by the way. Yeah, so I smell it. And I know. I'm already wanting to grab. Exactly. It's very tempting, isn't it? Yes. So our relationship goes way back. Uh, we've really appreciated to your success and what they do, what they bring to the industry for a long time. But today, Derek and I are here to candidly talk about customer service and how to wow your customers. And I'd like for us to get to know you better, get to know your business better and how you serve the industry, where do you want to start? Definitely, yeah. So, so To Your Success is based out of Kennesaw, Georgia, just about an hour south of the new flat right here. So, um, but we're the number one gifting service for home service companies. And so basically what we're doing is we're sending out a wow package after a job is complete, whether it's an HVAC install, whether it's a plumbing job, electrical job, a roofing job. So after that job is complete, we're going to bake up a fresh batch of cookies just like you're seeing here. We're going to drop ship it in the mail to the homeowner. It's got a thank you card in there. We vacuum seal the cookies. So by the time that customer gets it, it's still very fresh. When they open that, the the lid on the tin or the lid on the box, they actually get that freshly baked aroma like you and I are getting right now from me. So, um, but it's just a, you know, it's just a fun experience for that customer. They open their mailbox and it's just this unexpected treat, just kind of, you know, going over the top and food is very relational. It's very personal, right? That's how we, it's very central to friendship and bonding, right? Food is always central to human relationships. And so I think that's one of the reasons why it resonates so well with the homeowners when they receive this gift. But yeah, it's it's a wow package, about 30, 40 bucks out the door. The contractor's logo on it, something like this here, you know, cookie tin with the contractor's logo, co-op if you're HVAC, Mm -hmm. as far as the manufacturer of the equipment goes. So cookie tins, here's a big mug, 30 ounce tumbler filled with cookies inside. Again, co-op, contractor's logo here. And then just a nice, very gourmet kind of box. We hand tie the bow on all you know these boxes that we do. So these are the kinds of things that the customers receive. And again, it's just it's just this moment that wow, the cus- the contractor really cares. They don't want just a one time transaction. They don't want to just fix my stuff. Mm-hmm. They want a long term relationship. So that's kind of what we do at, at Two Your Success. You know, Derek, I can't help but to bring marketing into this. 
We're talking about wowing customers and appreciating service, right? Appreciating our customers after service. And it ties directly into marketing. All too often, we spend a lot of money to acquire, especially in contracting. We spend a lot of money to acquire customers. And we don't mean to as contractors, but it's very easy to get into kind of the churn and not really burn, but churn and churn, right? We go from customer to customer to customer. And it's not only contracting, it's every industry. Mm -hmm. Photography. Have you ever had a photographer, you have a new baby and you take it to get the two week old infant baby pictures. And what an opportunity, right? Why does that photographer not say right then and there, oh, you want a one month, a two month, a three month? Can I do more business with you? They, they don't. And so as a society, it's very easy to get into the, oh, I had a customer, I served them, I'm done, and I move on to the next one. And we forget to not only thank our customers, right. which is where Two Year Success is such a brilliant piece because you can automatically, and I know we can talk about software too, I know you can automate the yeah. process, but what about after a customer's been served six months down the road? That's right. What would you recommend? Yeah. So it's never too soon or too late to say thank you, right? Mm-hmm. So even if you've done a gift right after a job is complete to do one down the road, you know, again, people do business with people, mm-hmm. not entities, not, you know, capacitors and parts and things. People are doing business with people. And so anytime you want to strengthen a relationship, you should do it. You can say, well, it's been six months since the sale. It's been a year since the sale. Have they forgotten about us? Well, maybe, but that's your job Mm -hmm. to help them remember about you. So, you know, we never forget about making the sale, but I think a lot of contractors forget about the relationship Mm -hmm. and that's the key to their success. Like customers are the cornerstone of a contracting business. Mm -hmm. And that's really true. You know, yes, there's processes and, you know, best practices and things like that. And you have to do that to have successful business, but you don't have a business Mm -hmm. unless you have customers. And that's really one of the main things I want the listeners to hear today to get as a takeaway is that this is the belief I want you to have that customers want a strong relationship with a contractor and every interaction is an opportunity to strengthen the relationship. Hmm. So that's something that homeowners actually really do. They want to find a go-to contractor, Danielle. They're not just like wanting to to float around and this time they'll call this one, this time they'll call that one. There are deal shoppers out there, but for the most part, homeowners just say, look, this is my go-to company. Yes. And they want that two-way loyalty. Exactly. I can see that. I know that um, a, a lot of businesses that we work with, you know, contracting companies, they're very proud of their customer base, their service agreement base, you know, and, and it's very common to say, oh, a customer has done business with me for 50 years. But then there's also, we know, we know that there's so many that haven't been doing business with us for 50 years. Right. So I love how right. we can use two-year success to keep thanking those customers and reminding them that we're here to serve them. Now we've seen statistics have proved Derek, that whether you send something to your customers every four weeks or every six weeks, there's no difference. They just know that they're getting something from you. So whether it's a, Hey, you know, here's a reminder of something else that we do or uh, fall or spring tune up time is around the corner or Hey, you know, winter's coming, for example, do you want your pipes checked or your hose bibs checked or something like that? You could use candy and cookies and gifts to even send the reminder for those things. Right. Again, there are lots of points along the customer journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. And really as a contractor, I'm encouraging you guys to think about at every facet of the customer journey, how can we wow the customer? So whether that's in your marketing, your advertising, which is more passive from you towards your customer, but how about a fun billboard? Mm -hmm. You know, just something that's memorable, something that is, that, that makes them want to connect with you, but always think about genuine human connection. Anytime you're doing business with somebody, um, another facet of the customer journey is going to be the first phone call, right? Mm-hmm. So an example of that would be, say, an HVAC company where it's in the dead of winter and a customer calls and they said, my furnace went out. So how about that CSR? The first thing they do is to say, man, I'm so sorry. Your furnace went out. Boy, it's cold out there. You know, uh, it's got to be really hard for you guys. Tell you what, we have a very capable technician who's going to be out there very soon to provide five-star service. So what just happened was they provided two things. Mm -hmm. Okay, the customer calls, and usually if you have a problem with your home, it's a stressful time. Whether it's your your plumbing going out, your HVAC system going down, Mm -hmm. your roof has a leak. I mean, this is your home. This is where you raise your family. You and me have what was that? They're so inconvenienced. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. The stressful time. It's never happens at a convenient time, right? So stuff breaking in your house is never convenient. Especially like you have kids, I have kids, Mm -hmm. you know, your home is your hub. And you want people to feel safe and secure yeah. in your home. So when something happens, you're already kind of on edge a little bit. So when that CSR does this, this two things right here, they provide 
empathy and reassurance. So the empathy is, I'm so sorry your system went out. Excellent. It's got to be really hard. The reassurance is, we have a five-star technician who's going to be out there about 60 minutes to provide five-star service. Mm -hmm. So you're wowing the customer. So today, again, we're talking about how to wow customers in your service business. Well, think about every point of that customer journey. So that initial intake phone call to then when the technician shows up at the door, how they present themselves, are they uniformed well, do they have their tools in hand, ready to take care of business? Um, so when my youngest child was born, I've got four kids, two girls and two boys, and I know you have three. So between us, we got a bunch I of kids I love kid stories. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so my youngest, um, this little rascal, so my wife, the first three pregnancies, when she went into labor, was very long labor, like 18 hours, 30 hours. I mean, just like incredibly long labors. So number four, he's getting close to his due date. And about 7.15 that morning, my wife said, okay, you know, I think today might be the day. Just call my mom, give her a heads up. All right, that's at 7.15, right, in the morning. Well, 9 o'clock, this kid's ready to be born. We're still at home. <laughs> this little turkey didn't even give us a chance to get to the hospital. He came so fast. So my point is, is that we had no time to get to the hospital, call 911. And of course, like, this is my fourth rodeo with a kid, but I'm still not quite ready to deliver a baby, right? Like, right. nobody's really ever <laughs> ready to do that unless that's your job. Yeah. So we called 911, and when those guys showed up, they had their equipment in hand and they just look like they're ready for business. So that's what I'm talking about is, is yeah. you know, it's just when you show up and you're ready to take care of this problem for the customer, they have confidence in you and you're reassuring them by the fact that, look, we're ready to roll. I love that story and I love that you put it in here. And, and by the way, he, everything worked out fine. He's healthy. <laughs> it was on the couch. Thankfully, it was leather. So <laughs> Awesome. But the visual that I got now was service providers, we are showing up and we are ready. And so as yes. Derek said, this is such great, helpful. For some of you, maybe it's just a reminder that you need to have a call script there for all of your CSRs and everybody in the business, a reminder to follow the script and to say, hey, you called the right place. And I'm That's so right. sorry that, that that happened to you, but don't worry, we can take care of you. And we're gonna send out that uh, technician that's gonna give you five-star service. That's, right. that's excellent, great tips. And then they're gonna show up there and they're gonna do that great job. So. I met actually a new flat rate customer about a year and a half ago at one of your meetings in Chattanooga. Awesome. His name is B.W. White. I'm sure you know who he is. Um, great guy. So he and I met for the first time at this meeting. And when he heard what we do as far as wow factor and these thank you gifts and so forth, he said, you know, he says, funny you mentioned wow factor. He said, about 25 years ago when I was still out in the field, and he's probably in his early 60s now, but he said, about 25 years ago when I was still out in the field, I get this call late one afternoon from, we'll just call her Mrs. Jones. Sure. Um, from Mrs. Jones and her system went down, HVAC system went down, and it's about five o'clock or so, so it was kind of winding down on the, on the day, but B.W. White said, okay, uh, Mrs. Jones, I'll be there first thing in the morning, get your system taken care of. And he said, she kind of hesitated a little bit. She said, well, first thing in the morning? He said, yeah. She said, well, and she kind of was hemming and hawing a little bit. And he said, is everything okay? She said, yeah, it's just that, you see, I have this morning routine where I get up and I go to Starbucks and I get this very <laughs> special drink. And it was something really custom, like, yeah. you know, two shots of this, a non-fat this and all like that. She said, it's just I get this special drink and that's what kind of helps me get my day going. And then she kind of caught herself and she was like, well, no, no, of course I need you to come out first thing in the morning. So he said, okay, all right, I'll be there. So next morning, B.W. White shows up at the door, Mrs. Jones's house, he knocks on the door. She opens the door and there's BW with a smile on his face and that custom cup of coffee nice. in his hands. And so, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about, Danielle. Nice. It's just, he listened, Yes. he cared about something that was important yeah. to this customer and she was a first time customer. And by the way, he got the job that day. He did the replacement. Awesome. Fast forward 25 years. Mrs. Jones is still a customer, awesome. had multiple systems replaced. She's, she does maintenance agreements with him. She's had all kinds of work done. I ran into him again recently and I said, how are things going with you know, Mrs. Jones? And he said, he said, going great, rolling along great. I said, what, what do you think the lifetime revenue has been you know, from that relationship? And he was figuring stuff out in his head and he said, he said, probably somewhere around $100,000. Wow. All kinds of work. He's done electrical, he's done plumbing. Wow. And we're going to cost him 10 minutes and five bucks. Of course. Of course. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. And it reminds me of the importance of value in buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. So here we work hard to gain a new customer and we go out there and we service the customer system, uh, whether it's electrical, plumbing, HVAC, whatever it is, we do the work, customer pays and then we leave and then the customer um, 
you know, is upset. They have buyer's remorse. Maybe a spouse comes home and says, why'd you do that? Why'd you choose that company? Why'd you spend money there? Or you spent too much money. And they have this buyer's remorse. But something, Derek, that you said, you know, taking the time to bring the coffee, the value of time spent mm-hmm. with customers, listening to them, caring about what's going yes. on in their concerns, caring about their inconvenience, it builds value up way That's past right. the dollar amount of the transaction. In that value, and then, of course, I can't help but to tie it back to to your success with cookies and products and, you know, gifts, the value of giving back to your customer after you've listened and empathized and fixed their problem goes so much farther and it can help cancel out so much of the buyer's remorse that happens in the industry. So you're making deposits in that customer's bank, if Mm -hmm. you will, right? So that if there's ever a time that you need to take a withdrawal out, Mm -hmm. we're running late. I'm so sorry we had to cancel your appointment today or we didn't have the part on the truck after all, Mm -hmm. and there's some little disappointment, if you've been proactive enough to be building up Mm -hmm. the relationship, putting those deposits in in their account, you know, chances are you're not gonna lose that customer over a little mistake, Mm -hmm. right? So when a customer is is emotionally bonded to a contractor, okay, they are more loyal, Mm -hmm. they're they're less price sensitive, Mm -hmm. and they're more forgiving of mistakes or delays and things like that. So if you say, well, what's the value of, you know, these cookies and these wow factor things? Like, is it just to give my customer a little hit of dopamine? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, (laughs) it's part of it is to give them a little emotional high about how you're doing. But, you know, you're inspiring loyalty in that customer and inspired loyalty is so much deeper and wider and more contagious than whenever you try to demand loyalty, Mm -hmm. right? So you think of just any relationship, if you try to demand that person, You're not gonna get it. No, you're never gonna get it. In fact, it's gonna be counterproductive. Yes. You're gonna, you're gonna chase that person away by trying to demand that you love me or that you be loyal to me. So in the same thing in business, yeah. don't demand their loyalty, you have to earn it. And it can be earned, but you have to do the right things and that's part of what we're talking about today. Yeah, write that down. Inspire loyalty. I, I mean, I want everybody to grab their <laughs> pen right now and write that down. What a, what a great line, inspire loyalty with your customers. Uh, when my father-in-law started this company back in 1998, you said, well, why would somebody go out and just start a cookie company? You know, what was the inspiration for that? So Jim Childers, the founder of our company, he was an RV dealer for many, many years. And so they sold, you know, motor homes and travel trailers and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And one of the main manufacturers that they sold was a company called Fleetwood. And so when a customer of theirs bought a Fleetwood RV, then the factory survey would go out from Fleetwood to the consumer, much, much like an HVAC, you know, factory might send a train yeah. survey or okay. you know, that kind of thing. So, so Jim and his company, they were tracking their customer satisfaction reading and it was, it was hovering right about 92%. So not bad. I mean, that's, that's an A, right? Yeah. So, but there was another dealership, another RV dealer that was about the same size as Jim's dealership in this next state over. So we're in Georgia and this guy was in Alabama and, but this guy was getting about 98, 99% consistently kind of on the same, the same type of survey, the same questions and everything from Fleetwood. So Jim said to this guy, he said, all right, so what are you doing that we're not doing here? Because I feel yeah. like we take really good care of our customers. Like we really care. We go above and beyond. And the guy kind of leaned over to Jim and he whispered, he said, Jim, the secret's in the cookies. <laughs> and he went on to explain, he said, we send a cookie gift to all of our customers, whether they buy a big motor home or just a smaller wow. pop-up, right? A small travel trailer or something mm-hmm. like that. So Jim had heard of this concept, Danielle, and he said, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. So they start doing the cookie gifts, sending these out to all their customers. Sure enough, this is not a joke. I'm not just making this up because it sounds like the perfect ending. (laughs) But within about six months on that same survey, nothing changed on the survey question. Hmm. No other internal process changed for Jim's RV dealership except the cookies. They went from 92 to 99% customer satisfaction consistently. Wow. So you ask yourself, why? Because... Mm-hmm. Food, gifts, tokens of appreciation, they do make you feel mm-hmm. more satisfied. They make mm-hmm. you feel more cared for. So naturally, mm-hmm. you're going to give your loyalty to somebody. And to your point, a minute ago, you said, you don't have to be the cheapest in town. Mm-hmm. You can be more expensive, but if that customer feels like, yeah, but this contractor understands mm-hmm. our situation. They have empathy. They're ready to roll. Uh, the guys are professional. They know what they're doing. They're taking great care of us. They're building the relationship. I'm willing to pay a little bit more because I because I trust mm-hmm. them. And, and I'm, I'm sure you see this all the time. I'm sure even in your coaching, you tell contractors about the importance of building trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do. 
And so much of it comes from the empathizing and the listening to the customer, just like you said, and, and having that two-way loyalty. What a great story for how you guys got started. And then from there, how did it transition over into the service industry? Yeah, so um, when Jim first started out, we were, our first customers were other RV dealers. And so, because Jim had used a company, he said, hey, I'm doing this on my own now. So some of his peers said, well, great, you send the cookies out for us instead. So getting into the service industry was through a uh, territory manager for a distributor, HVAC distributor that's actually here in our state, which I know you know, Mingledorf's. Um, it was a territory manager that said, Jim, I see what you're doing in the RV industry. I see a great fit in the HVAC industry because these are high ticket items. You've got the potential for a repeat business, definitely referrals, like everybody owns a home. Right. Yeah. Not everybody necessarily owns an RV, right? Or a motor home. True. But we, everybody knows of a friend, relative, mm -hmm. somebody, right? Everybody has a home, they're gonna need the service at some point. So he said, Jim, I really encourage you to take what you've built here, put it into HVAC and just kind of see what happens. And from there, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So first HVAC trade show that we went to even before I was around, um, was signed up 70 contractors at that first trade show. People were hungry for this, no pun intended. They <laughs> <laughs> um, said, you know, we're onto something here. And so it's been a great fit because again, when you think about the contracting industry, so competitive. Yes. Essentially, essentially you need tools, a truck, and knowledge. Right. And you and I know that you actually need a lot more <laughs> right. than that to, to have a legit yes. and very successful and But there are a business. lot that have those things that are in business out there. Right. Yeah. Your handyman kind of thing. So, Absolutely. So technically, there's fairly low barriers uh -huh. you know, to a service business, whether it's HVAC, plumbing, electrical, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so fairly low barriers and very competitive, especially if you live in a metro market like I'm in the Atlanta market. Mm -hmm. There's just tons of contractors oh, so, everywhere. Yeah. Right. So. So these contractors were hungry for something different. They said, mm -hmm. we need to differentiate. We need mm -hmm. to set ourselves apart. And they really started buying into the concept of, you know what? We've been so focused on the technical side of our business and we've been very focused on the accounting side, both very important, mm -hmm. but incomplete without the relational side. Right. Of the so so we, we began to see that, okay, you know, these contractors are not thinking about that I'm actually in a relationship business. Right. When they started to understand that, then they said, okay, you know what? I see that too. Now I need some, I need some tools. Mm -hmm. I can't help but to bring up the whole working in the business versus working on the business as a business owner. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and for our audience being business owners, we're all busy and then we're superheroes because we're good at putting out fires and our team comes to us and wants us to fix something. And so we do, right? And so we're always working in the business and we try our darnest to get away and to work on the business. But the relational piece, just like you said, you know, it's easy to, are my processes in place so I can build up freedom? You know, is my pricing right? Are, do I have the right people on my team? And then we get so busy in that we do forget often yeah. the relational piece. I love the trades. You know, I've grown up in the trades. Uh, it's, it's my world. And so I also love when we have people come into our home and, and do different things. Last week I had asbestos removed from my basement. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I'm thankful though. They did a great job. Yeah. And uh, now, now I feel much better about my kids playing in the basement. But a couple years ago, we had a new cement patio built in our backyard. And oh my gosh, it was my favorite thing in the world. Uh, and it was stamped concrete and just beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. I've wanted to refer that contractor a thousand times because they did a great job at every single time. To this day, three years later, when I walk outside our back door, the French doors, That's walk right. out onto that patio, yeah. I'm like, gosh, they did a great job on mm -hmm. this patio. And I would tell everybody, but I don't know who did it. Right. Not once did they, well, they, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't send me a thank you gift and they didn't have to. They sure. essentially made the deal with my husband, right. but they never sent anything or left anything in the home so that other members of the home would know who did the mm -hmm. great work. And you yeah. could say, Derek, well, Danielle, just ask your husband who the contractor was. Well, it's been three years. He may or may sure. not remember. Right. And I forget to ask him. But yeah. if they would have just sent something or <laughs> even a thank you card or even just yeah. a card or left a card on the counter, something, I would be able to tell everybody, everybody online today who did that great, awesome patio and tell everybody to get one. But my point is, you right. know, it's, it's, it's a little thing that's such a big thing. And as business owners, you know, I'm not judging anybody. I fail all the time too. We all do and we forget these little things. But to your point, let's not forget the relationship with right. the people that are transacting, transacting business with us and trusting us to solve their problems and their pain. And too many contractors put the responsibility for the relationship on the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So to your point a second ago, you can't remember the name of the company. Mm -hmm. it, listen, this is important. So as a contractor, it's not your customer's job to remember you it's your job to be memorable. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that company, they, they missed an opportunity mm -hmm. with you because you're like, I love it. Great contractor came out great. No idea who it is. Yeah. So I want to Facebook it to the world. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's always, the responsibility is always on the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. To invest in the relationship, to uh, earn referrals, to mm -hmm. earn those great online reviews that everybody covets. Mm -hmm. It's like, we want the, we want the benefit without the work. We want the great online reviews, but without yeah. the five-star service. Yeah. So again, that thinking is incomplete. So my encouragement to the listeners is, okay, it's a holistic business. It's mm -hmm. not, again, it's not just technical stuff of mm -hmm. how to fix it, not just the accounting piece, but it is a relational side of things too. Otherwise, your customers may just have sort of a generic kind of meh mm -hmm. customer experience, and that's not what you're going for. Right. So, you know, again, I, I mentioned before, I have four kids. You've got three kids. And as parents, I think one thing that you really long for is you want your kids to have a great childhood. Yeah. And you want them to look back years from now with great memories. Like, uh -huh. man, I loved my family growing up. We had great times. Yep. We had great shared experiences. And so nobody wants their kid to grow up and look back and be like, I had a meh childhood, you know, <laughs> right? So, but again, as parents, we have to be the ones that step up, take responsibility to plan those campouts, mm -hmm. to buy the boat that we're going to take the family out on, to have those relationship building moments. Yes. It's the same thing in business that your customer is, is going to have just a meh experience mm -hmm. unless you do something to kind of go over the top. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that we, a lot of what we talk about at To Your Success is that customer satisfaction the word satisfied, that's the floor, mm. Danielle, not the ceiling. Interesting. But a lot of contractors think, okay, the pinnacle of achievement is, is I want 100% satisfaction, which means, generally means that nothing went wrong on the job. Okay. So that's, the customer says, well, I was satisfied. I was, it's kind of like, I was hungry and I ate a meal, I was satisfied. Right. Satisfied my hunger. But how many times have we had experiences where you go out to a restaurant that was an awesome experience. Yeah. Not only did I get full, but I want to keep going back. Yes. I want to tell people about it. Yes. Or you have a bad experience, like, yeah, technically I, I filled out my stomach, but yeah, food was bad, yeah. service was bad, I don't want anybody to go there. Yeah. So again, you know, it's not just satisfying the presenting problem of that customer that the plumbing was leaking and congratulations, you stopped it leaking. Okay, mm -hmm. but that's going to be somewhat of just a neutral experience. Yes, mm -hmm. they fixed the problem. However, there's so much more, there's an opportunity for so much more because that satisfaction that meeting the need the customer had is only the beginning, it's only the floor. In fact, I want to share some synonyms for the word satisfied. So in terms of business or how customers can feel mm -hmm. toward a contractor, here are some synonyms and they're not, they're not going to be pretty, okay? <laughs> so when the customer says, I was satisfied, here's some other words that they could potentially have said. Apathetic, mm -hmm. at risk, so I'm being taken away by a competitor. Disengaged, wow. indifferent, uninspired, uncommitted, and they're just at equilibrium. We talk about this a lot too, that the customer's experience, again, if it's generic, they're just kind of like this, like nothing was really good, hmm. nothing was really bad. If the slightest thing goes wrong now, now I'm unsatisfied, I'm gonna be telling people about it, I'm gonna right. make a bad review. But a little thing to wow the customer, a little something extra, kind of the same concept. You could push them over. So, so you want to disrupt that equilibrium. Don't just yes. leave them neutral, apathetic, disengaged. You want them to become partial yeah. to your company. So. When a customer is wow versus satisfied, listen to the synonyms for that, mm -hmm. and you'll see the, the contrast. So instead of being apathetic, they're energized. Instead of being at risk, they're loyal. Instead of being disengaged, they're attentive. Instead of being indifferent mm -hmm. or neutral, they're actually partial mm -hmm. to your contracting business. Instead of being uninspired, they become imaginative. Yeah. Instead of being uncommitted, they become galvanized. And instead of being at that equilibrium, they become emotionally bonded. Wow. I'm gonna let there be a pause for a second. <laughs> Those are positive. You just had a wow moment. Well, yeah, yeah, wow in what action words, what positive action right. words. And and it's such a fine line just by listening to those words, that fine line of being at risk. I'm glad you shared those. So again, we're, you know, we're talking about how to wow customers in your service business. We've already talked about the initial phone call when they call for service. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've talked about your disposition at arrival, mm -hmm. right? How the technicians look. But let's be thinking about, I want to hear your ideas too from your family service business or from your training to contractors. Um, what about in the sales process? Is there an opportunity to wow? I think there is. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some things that you've seen your clients do or that you guys have done in your own business? So during the selling process, what is something that can, that can wow the customer? Yeah. For us, it's all about no pressure sales. 
right? You know, in the selling process, you don't ever want the customer to feel backed into a corner. You never want them to feel like they're being sold something because everybody hates it when you try to sell them something they want to buy. And so the new thought rate was founded with that principle of allow the customer to buy the level of service that they want. And then again, listen to them, have Mm. the empathy with them and let them choose the level. So the new thought rate is a, a pricing system with uh, five different price points for anything in the home, service or replacement repair, uh, re- replacement new installs, all of that. Uh, and, and giving the options to so the technician right. or whoever's doing the sale. It could be the owner. It could be a comfort consultant. However, the you know your business has it set up to be. Mm-hmm. It is there in front of the homeowner, listens to the concerns, takes in the information, puts together their best recommendations, mm-hmm. plural, <laughs> and then offers options and say, okay, Mr. Customer, right. here's my options. The top is the most premium and the most permanent. It allows me to take my time, do a great job, and give you a better warranty. With that option, I will do you know XYZ service here. What, but I do have other options. What should we do? And so we really believe in scripting for the sales process and to take out the pressure. We don't want any pressure sales. Yep. And then allowing the customer to buy the level of service that they want, we find is really important. Because speaking of synonyms, another word for options is freedom mm-hmm. or independence. That is right. So we know how I want to feel is not back into a corner. Mm-hmm. Look, this is your only option right here. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if right. they feel like I've got three or four options, I feel like I'm in control more. Yes. Right. Well, I'm going to tell you what I feel best about doing. So I love that. To me, that, that would provide a wow experience if you're just used to the traditional time and materials and look, this is your quote and that's it. You know, but having that freedom, having that flexibility, I, I think really would go a long way. Customers love options, and we find that referrals go up. Satisfaction is wow factor. Satisfaction That's right. That's goes right. above and beyond. Uh, closing rates, average service tickets, everything goes up. Now, Derek, there's something else I wanted to bring up too, and it's all about the concept of owning the home. You know, it's easy for us to say and, and to coach people and say, you want to own the home. And so when you go in and you do a service call, be sure and sticker everything, right? That's right. And make sure that you own the home and make sure that the customer knows, oh, well, we do this as well. And it's very easy, especially if you do, whether you do multiple uh, trades in your company or you have extra things that you can do. Maybe you, you know, do HVAC, but you also do duct cleaning. It's easy for the customer not to know that, right? So letting them know so that you can own the home. But with what we've been talking about today, wowing customer service, it sounds like we're going to own the relationship even past the home. So it's twofold. We can own the home and stick her the heck out of the home. (laughs) But then after the homeowner leaves, we can still have that relationship with the customer and we get to own another home. Yeah, that's a great point. And we have a unique perspective at, at our company because one of the things we do also is customer surveys. So... We'll ask the homeowner on behalf of the contractor how things went on the job and so forth. And then the customer can leave comments. I just saw a comment yesterday where the homeowner said, um, I love that you guys are a one-stop shop for us, Mm -hmm. for HVAC, plumbing, electrical. Mm -hmm. So that's just a reminder that you have stickering everything, letting them know that you have an expertise in all these different areas. So it's so important for contractors to, you know, maybe a great goal in 2021 is to we're going to bring out another segment, you know, of our business. Mm-hmm. We're going to expand out of plumbing into HVAC also, right? right. So there's that whole thing. Um, but custom, again, going back to what I said earlier, the customers want that strong relationship and every interaction is an opportunity to inspire loyalty. So continuing the whole idea of, okay, well, how do we provide wow factor to every point of the customer's journey? Well, what about during the actual service? Mm-hmm. So now that the selling process is over, the job's being done, whether it's an installation or maybe it's a service call, to be thinking about how can I bring wow factor into this? And I actually saw a great handout from you guys a while back that was like 101 wow factor ideas. I'm glad you brought that uh, up. Yeah. Because anybody listening today, if you haven't seen it, let us know. Reach out here in the show notes, uh, find us at newflatrate.com, and we'll send you that 101 wow factors, all different ideas yeah. of how to provide wow factor service. And, and on that little card that you guys have put together, mm-hmm. a little handout, it even says something like it should take about five minutes. Right. And if you think about B.W. White, a custom cup of coffee, it took him about five minutes and, yeah. you know, or 10 minutes and five bucks or whatever. But you get the idea is that it was yeah. just, it doesn't have to be something that's, that's going to be a huge commitment on the, on the part of that technician. But hey, you know, let's say it's Christmas time and they're up checking a furnace in the attic and the technician sees a box that says Christmas decorations. Mrs. Jones, I'm up here in the attic. Would you like me to bring this box down for you? It's just being attentive. It's just yes. being, again, that's what comes back to just being relational, like thinking that this is, this is a person, this is their home. This isn't just their furnace I'm mm-hmm. fixing. 
Okay, but how can I connect? How can I make a genuine human connection? Or noticing stuff in their house, noticing if they have kids. Very obvious if you have kids, especially right. little kids. <laughs> you can't hide it. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere that <laughs> just says, screams that, okay, there's tons of kids in this house. So, but if you notice that, um, hey, I, I see you have kids, so how old are they? Or what are they into? Or, you know, so that's not, just making that genuine human connection. Or you see a piece of art on the wall. That's a beautiful piece of art. Mm -hmm. Who painted that? Well, actually, my grandmother did. Really? Well, tell me about that. You know, I'm saying that the technician has such an opportunity yeah. to just be attentive, to be relational. Mm -hmm. You just, it, but they have to be kind of in that mindset. Yeah. And that's where leadership comes in too, mm -hmm. Danielle. Anything that you want to accomplish at the team member level mm -hmm. has to start with executive vision, right? And, and this is what you're sort of teaching your clients about all the time. Mm -hmm. Executive vision for what we're going to do as a company. And you have to have middle management buy-in. Mm -hmm. So your service manager, yeah. install manager, sales manager has to buy in and support mm -hmm. the vision of the executive level. And then that's how you get team member implementation and execution is by getting those other layers involved. But then also, you know, inspiring your team to do those things. Say, hey, listen to the difference in how this feels. Go out and get those tickets up today, boys, versus go out, have fun, take amazing care of our customers. I want to do the second. Right. Yes. I mean, totally different feel. Sign me up. Totally different feel to your yeah. job, to the work that you're doing. That's how you inspire your team. You just start speaking just more relational language. So technicians are going to be having more fun. The customers are having more fun with the technician who's engaging them. Those examples I gave yeah. you. Here's another idea. What about a, a prize bag for kids? Mm -hmm. Go to the dollar store. So easy. Cheap, right? Yes. The kids think it's the best thing in the world. They do, and I hate it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, I hate all those little trinkets around the house. But it's a parent's best kept secret yeah. in that it's so cheap. You know, the kids think it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So as a company, send somebody out, get 100 toys. That's 100 bucks. That's a lot of kids. Right. That's going to last you a long time. But equip your technicians with a little prize bag. So what that means is if there's a kid in the house and the technician's wrapping up mm -hmm. and you say, hey, reach your hand and grab something out. And they pull out a toy. How Special. fun is that? Yeah. So the kids are having fun. Yeah. Mom or dad's going to be smiling. If I see somebody taking good care of my kids, yep. I'm smiling. Guess who else is smiling? The technician. Mm -hmm. They're having more fun. Or you can have a treat bag for mm -hmm. the pets, little doggy biscuits. It, it's those kinds of things that, mm -hmm. again, that's what separates you from the pack. It does. You know, when we, we talked a minute ago about selling and sales, and of course, with the new flat rate, we highly recommend, you know, process and not pressuring the homeowner. That's we right. want to allow them to have options. So when it comes to um, recognizing things in the home and talking to the customer and building that relationship, we actually recommend doing that after you've addressed the primary concern. Mm -hmm. You know, you called us out here mm -hmm. today because... X, Y, Z. Yes. So let me go ahead and take a look at it and I'll show you some options. And now once you've chosen your options and we're transacting and we're doing business together, that's when after you provide that great service, like Derek's saying, do the wow factor because mm -hmm. you want to seal the deal with the extra wow factor afterwards. So we're not trying to get in the way on the front end so that right. the customer feels like, oh, they're just trying to be loving and kind to my kids so that I buy more from <laughs> them. No, you've already bought from us. Yeah. That's already done. And I, I just did great service for you. So now I'm going to carry down the, the Christmas ornaments. The yeah. job's already done. Now I'm going to offer you something for your dog and for your kids. And that way we can continue, like you said, just seal the deal in the relationship. I love how we're talking about the yeah. importance of the relationship. It's, you know, you know, I, I want to say that it's a lost art and it shouldn't be because it's humanity. And we're, we've all gotten so busy that, that we, we forget to be right. relational. That's right. But we were created to be relational. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Again, it's about those genuine human connections. Um, and you have a great point about there not being strings attached. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for you because of this. Right. All relationships go better when there's not strings attached. Yeah. Right. To you treating somebody good. Here's a couple other ideas too. I, I jotted down. You know, when you're in the home, leave the home better than you found it. I love that one. Can you can you shine something? Mm -hmm. Can you tighten something? Can you trim something like yeah. foliage? Uh, can you clean something extra in your work area? Can you upgrade something? Can you retrieve something, newspaper on the driveway, stuff in the attic? Yeah. Um, and then I'll also have here words of appreciation. Because each of us, there's even a guy, Gary Chapman, wrote a book years ago called The Five Love Languages. Mm -hmm. And he figured out that you know people receive love differently in different ways. 
Mm-hmm. The way you receive love may be different than the way I do. In yeah. other words, for you, maybe words of affirmation. When somebody says, it totally is. Oh, actually. I know. That. Yes, I know. That. Yeah. <laughs> so, Danielle, you're doing a great job, by the way. <laughs> That's so. right. I love that. Tell yeah. me more. That's right. So, for some, it's, it's those encouraging words of like, you could do it. You're doing an awesome job. Like, you're so good at this and that. Right. So, the technician can do sort of the words of appreciation. So, mm-hmm. leaving a little note behind. Mm-hmm. So, technicians should have some note cards and just say, you know, just leaves it on the counter or whatever. Mm-hmm. Thanks for letting me come in your home. Mm-hmm. Appreciate the relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll see you again soon. Just a little something like that mm-hmm. can go a long way. Yeah. So that's a written one. And then a verbal appreciation would be what I encourage is for the managers and the owners to start getting back on the phone with customers. Right. The main reason that owners are not on the phone with customers is because when they are on the phone, it's usually because... There's Somebody's that. mad. Exactly. Yeah. So if you ask somebody like, why do you, why do you hate being on the phone with customers? It's because mm-hmm. of that. It's because there's, because there's a problem I'm trying to solve. Well, be proactive yeah. and get on the phone. So look at your list of customers and go back to those that have been with you 20 years or more and just start hitting that. And just, it's just a positive touch point. Thanks for your business for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. We love servicing you and your family. We love being in your home. It's just those, those kinds of things. Um, another idea on the, so, so there's the words thing. There's also unexpected gifts. Mm. Okay. For me, that's mine, by the way. So if you have anything you want to give me before I leave here today, I'll gladly take it. Um, so you like presents. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's right. So unexpected gifts, and that's where the whole prize bag for the kids and yes. the, you know, doggy biscuits for the dog, whatever. Um, I was talking to another contractor recently, and what he does is he actually sends a mobile masseuse to the contractor's home. If they get an HVAC installation, uh-huh. it costs them a couple hundred bucks to do I it. Bet it does. Now he gets prior consent from the homeowner. Of so course. it's kind of creepy of like, I'm here for your massage, <laughs> you know, right? right? So he gets prior consent, but yeah. that's, just what, that's just what he's chosen to do. That's one of his things that he does. But I love it. It's those creative ideas, Danielle. Mm-hmm. It's just the wow factor, yeah. unexpected, going above and beyond. And of course we do the cookies because honestly, this is so easy to execute. Mm-hmm. Right. For a contractor, we just need a name and address, and then we bake it, we ship it out. And again, we do automate with several dispatch softwares. So uh, if you use one of our integration partners, then it's completely automated also. Mm-hmm. But it's these types of things, in these unexpected things, it's the words, mm-hmm. it's the it's the, the acts of service of shining yeah. something, retrieving something, fixing something, tightening something that was loose. Right. Derek, we've talked about so many great things today, and I know... Um, that our audience is going to want to get in touch with you. And we're at the end of our time. I, I, we could keep going all day. Yeah, I know we yeah. can. But what's the best way for everybody to get in touch with you? And, and I also heard that maybe you might have a free gift or some cookies <laughs> for them. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of times we love others in the way we like to be loved. So I'm offering you a free gift. Okay. Awesome. So here's the thing. If you'll reach out to me and I don't know the best way to have my contact information or not through you guys. But your email or your web address, which yeah. you prefer. We'll so... So go to, I'm going to give you our website, to toyoursuccess.com, T-O-Y-O-U-R-S-U-C-C-E-S-S.com. There's a chat function there. So if you actually will just chat to us mm-hmm. and say, I was on a podcast, Derek was on it, he said something about free cookies, then I'll take care of you at that point. So we just need to know who you are and how to get it to you. But I'm offering a free batch of our delicious freshly baked cookies to anybody who's listening right now. Just let me know you'd like to try that. Love to send that to you. And again, the gifts surveys and uh, reports back to management on how your technicians are doing. So that's the main thing that we're trying to do, but it's all about wow factor, building strong relationships. So again, go to our website at twoorsuccess.com. Mention that you're on this podcast. I'll hook you up with some delicious cookies. Thanks, Derek, for being here today. Thanks, Daniel. Great to be here. Wow. In this episode, Derek and I had a great time talking about wowing customer service but as you can see back here Derek and Rosalind are having way too much fun eating way too many delicious cookies so good and (laughs) as Derek mentioned on this uh, episode if you would like a free gift of cookies shipped directly to you please go to toyoursuccess.com and chat in there that you saw Derek and I talking today thanks for being here Hey, it's Melody with The New Flat Rate, and this week's Storytime with TNFR, we're highlighting Jonathan, who's a heating and air contractor. So check it out. I'm Jonathan with Cool Masters Heating and Air Conditioning out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. Uh, we have been in business now for 14 years, and we just recently came on with The New Flat Rate back in February of 2018. Um, I'll tell you, it's been wonderful for us to be able to offer options to our customers, uh, you know, very similar to when they go out 
to dinner. We're not telling them what they need. They're making the selection on their own, and it's giving our technicians the ability to uh, upsell without really upselling. As far as what it's done for our business, it has doubled our revenue uh, in, uh, since we started using the new flat rate. Literally has doubled our revenue, so I can't be any more satisfied with that. But it, it also takes a lot of pressure and stress off of our off of our technicians because uh, they're not, you know, out there to sell. They're out there just to give options to the customer, and, you know, and it takes the weight off of the technician and gives it to the customer to make that buying decision. You know, I, I was always trying to figure out how do we get around the customer that says, when we tell them, you need this, and they right away go inside on their computer and Google search, well, what does that cost? And all they're seeing is the part cost. They're not seeing the value in, or the cost of driving the tr a fully stocked truck with a fully trained technician and the girl that answered the phone and, and everything that goes along with running a business. All they, all they see is that part. And the new flat rate takes that out of the equation. We're selling a service which happens to include that part. It's been really good for us, but literally has doubled our revenue. Um, I'm anxious to see the end of year numbers to see where we, where we were and where we are now. So very, very, ha very thankful for you. Wow. Are you thinking this might be a little too good to be true? Well, a lot of our members actually thought that before they came on board. The new flat rate is actually an easy to implement system, but like any great tool, you have to take it out of the box for it to work. So see if the new flat rate is right for you. Check us out at tnfr.us. Have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast.